listening to the City Church Podcast. We hope that you will be abundantly blessed by this message. If you would like to find out more about the city, please log on to our website, www.thecity.sg. Amen. Well, praise God. I, w- I want to speak to you on the subject, a new season. A new season. Something I like about... Uh, when you travel, is you get to experience different seasons. When you go to the U.S. in July, it's really, really hot. When you go to Paris in uh, December, it's, 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 it's freezing cold. Uh, and you get to dress up in different clothes or you get to take off your jacket. And, you know, I mean, different seasons. The, the one thing about Singapore is that you can't experience the four seasons, but you have to understand that God's the one who made seasons. I mean, spring summer, fall, and winter, God created this rhythm of life that, uh, that He allows us to, to, to experience and to enjoy. Likewise, in our walk with God and in the life uh, of our church, in your personal life, there are seasons. And if you listen to prophets, uh, I realize that something that they like to talk about or when they call you out, they will talk about your new season. Have you realized that, that every time they will prophesy in the, in the next season, you'll be this, in the next season, you'll be that. And sometimes you're just wondering, why am I always going to a new season? Now, you have to understand that that is part and parcel of the Christian life. You are moving from glory to glory. You are moving from faith to faith. And you are going from one season to the next season. And likewise, in this church, we are going from one season into the next season. And some seasons may last for many years. Some seasons may last just for a few weeks. Now, that's the mystery of the kingdom, something that... uh, most of us find it hard to comprehend, but that's how God works. When you pass the test in the season, you get promoted into the next season. Now, there's a season in the Bible that lasted for 38 years. In the book of, uh, in the book of uh, Exodus, when God called Moses and the Israelites out from Egypt, they were supposed to enter into the promised land and they're supposed to possess the land in two years. Are you with me? They are meant to wander around, not for 38 years, not for 40 years, but for two years, because in the desert, God has a training curriculum for the Israelites. There are are things that they were supposed to learn in two years. All right, but because they failed the test, they wandered for 38 years. And our text this morning is a short verse. It's found in Joshua chapter 1, verse 2. Joshua chapter 1, verse 2. And the first few uh, words. The Bible says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Now, you have to understand that this is a very crucial time in the life and in the history of Israel. They have wandered for 38 years. And those who have come up with Moses, except those who were born in the desert, those who were little children and the household of Joshua and Caleb, they have all died. Why? Because they failed to possess the promise in faith. And so they've all wandered and there were funerals in the desert. They've all died. And now a new generation arose and Joshua has been installed as the new leader and God came again into the scene and God said, my, Mos- my servant Moses is dead. Now, you have to understand that. Just picture with me, this is Israel. And for the last 40 years, they were under Moses' leadership. For the last 40 years, they, 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 had, they saw that staff that split the Red Sea and they saw the man that basically called down manna every single, well, every single day because you know, of God's promise to Moses. And Moses was the leader. Moses was, uh, was, the, was a living example of God being real. But now Moses is dead. And Joshua was the servant of uh, Moses and he was the protege. And now Joshua is being installed as the new leader. And from this verse, it's very interesting. You know, you may have seen this, you may not notice this, but it's very interesting because Moses is dead, Joshua is new, God's still there. The same God who spoke to Moses, who spoke to Israel about, about his intention for the nation to come out from Egypt into the promised land, the same God still speaking. All right, to, to the same nation, under a different leader, but God is still speaking. And this is the God we serve. 
We sang, we sang about how faithful He is, how good He is, He's unchanging, He's eternal, He's everlasting. And that's the God that we serve. God is still speaking. So my point is this, regardless of whatever season you are in, God is alive and He has a word that He has uh, in store for all of us. He, he has a word. But I want to just un unpack this short verse and share with you a few thoughts. I've got seven points basically, right? It's a long message. No, I'm just kidding you. Seven points from this one short verse. The first point I want to present to you is that the end of a season means the old has passed away. The end of a season means the old has passed away. The death of a leader or a season is not the end of the journey. Hello? The death of a leader or a season is not the end of a journey. In fact, the journey is still progressing. It simply means that a new season in God's plan is about to unfold. The end of a season in your life doesn't mean that it's the end of your story. It's just the closing of a chapter and the beginning of a brand new chapter. But until you breathe the last breath and say, I fought the good fight, I've run the race, I've kept the faith, it's not the end of the story. Turn to the person next to us, it's not the end of the story. But it simply means that the old has passed away. It simply means that Moses had passed away. It simply means that Moses' leadership is now gone and now arose Joshua. It simply means that what Moses had established, and I'll talk more about that as I go along, has become the foundation for the next generation to build on. Because you have to understand, we go from glory to glory. We don't leave the past glory behind. We build on our past experience and our past glory. Amen? Amen? There will be certain things, certain experiences, and even people you need to leave behind as you move into a new season. Let me repeat that. There are certain things, certain experiences, and even people you need to leave behind in the next season because they no longer bring life. Not just people. Don't just think about people, but think about experiences. They no longer bring life. What you used to enjoy as a Christian when you're a little babe in Christ, milk in the Word, no longer bring you enjoyment. Because you're now into a new season. You are, you are, you are now an adolescent. You are now growing up and, and, you, and you need a new kind of food. It no longer brings you joy. It no longer brings you life. Likewise, in your, in your life in God, there are certain experiences that you enjoy. For example, listen, see, a good way to, to discern that you're in, in, in a new season is that the things from the last season no longer bring you life. A good example is this. When we were growing up, a lot of us enjoyed going for big conferences. Come on. All right. We can't wait for the next festival of praise or the next kingdom invasion. We look forward to uh, famous speakers coming. They bring us some amazing word especially if they are dynamic and they scream and they shout when they speak and they give the call, we all run forward, we fall on our face, we cry, we roll around, people come and pray for us, we fall under the Spirit and we live for that high. But it comes a time in your Christian life where it loses that, that pull, that attraction and you said, oh, it's just another big event. Now, listen, I'll uh, bring this up in a moment's time, but it simply means that you're in a new season. So don't judge the event. Hello? Don't judge the camp. Don't judge the experience. You build on the experience and you build on the last season. Hello? You with me? It simply means the all has passed away. God has got new experiences, new things. He has got new people He wants you to meet. The all has passed Away. And it's very interesting that this is one of the strangest verses in the Bible. I can't fully grasp it yet. Maybe Andre can help us the next few Sundays. But you know, when Jesus was calling a few fishermen to follow him, one of them said, Let me go back and bury my father and mother first, and then I'll come and follow you. And Jesus appeared to be very rude. He said, Let the dead bury the dead. It means let them die. All right? You come and follow me. And I find that. That's a little bit troubling, especially for the Chinese culture. You mean let them die and then I, I should just ignore my parents and follow you? No, I believe that there's a lot of context in that verse, but I want to pull out some spiritual application, all right? So listen, Daniel is not saying 
leave your parents behind, follow God. All right? Spiritual application. Say spiritual. It simply means that, hey, let the dead things pass. All right? don't, the things that don't give life to you anymore, let them bury themselves. All right? Don't look back. Don't be troubled by them. But you go after what's life-giving. Go after me. Are you with me? So my question is, what do you need to leave behind 2017 as you move into 2018? Because you have to understand that as we go into a new season, and I'm prophesying this, I believe this is a prophetic message. I hope to unpack it, but I believe that for, for many of you, 2018 will be a new season. A new season, not just in your spiritual life, but a new season also in your practical life. Some of you are expecting. You got married in 2017, you'll, you'll become a father or a mother in 2018. It's a new season. There are new things you need to learn. There are people you need to leave behind. Like for example, uh, the friends who like to, to chill you out you know, for late night uh, supper. Guess what? When the baby comes along, ask all the parents behind. No way! You can go out for like late night, drink tea, talk about life, talk about soccer because there's a crying baby at home. Practical new season. There are some friends who have to leave her behind and say, I'm sorry, bro, but now my babe is more important than you, bro. And so you just have to move along <laughs> in your life. It's a new season. Some of you, 2017 was a tough year. You have lost a few things. And maybe that's why you are a Christian, because in your loss, you start to seek for, for, for greater meaning. In your loss, you start to look for God. And that's, and that's not wrong. A lot of us become believers in Christ because you know, our loss pushes us into a, into a search mode for deeper meaning in life. And that's how God uses the, the, the last season to compel us and to, and to move us into our next season. And so we're looking around God. There, and some of you need to leave some of those losses behind. Forgetting what lies behind, I push forward. It's hard for us to keep revisit, revisiting some of uh, the skeletons in, in our closet. Now, we just have to take those skeletons out, bury them underground, clear your closet, declutter your life. I encourage you, all right? Don't revisit your skeletons in the, in, the, in the closet. Take them out, bury them, put the cross over them and say, once and for all, you are buried. And if they try to resurrect themselves, say, hey, you, you know what? You are under the cross. Goodbye. I move forward. Are you with me? All has passed away. Turn to the person next to you and say, the all has passed away. There are many layers to, to this message. You can take it and apply it whatever and however you want it, all right? But there are losses. I, I sense in my spirit. Some of you have gone through a lot in 2017. You don't have to carry that bag of regrets into 2018. Bury it. The old has passed away. The new has come. I mean, the next point is that the start, the start of a new season begins with a word from God. The start of a new season begins with a word from God. Now, it can come through a prophetic word. It can, come, it, it can come through a sermon that you listen to. It can come when you open the Bible and read the Bible. It can come when you go for a conference, regardless. But the start of a new season begins with a word from God. And here, the word is, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. That verse marked the beginning of the next chapter in Israel's history. See, God always tells His people of His plans. In fact, Amos 3.3 uh, 3 says that He will do nothing until He reveals to His servants the prophets. So God's always speaking. The problem is that like the radio wave, right now if your favorite station is 90, Kiss 92, you can't hear the music that, that's playing in the air because you don't have an antenna. Amen? So you lost me there. But it simply means that you need an antenna to tune in to a certain frequency. Likewise, God is always speaking. He's always speaking to you. He's always speaking to you. He's always speaking to us. All right? And He wants to make known His plans to us like all good fathers, all good mothers. Before you go for a holiday, we set our kids down and say, this is the plan. All right? Sometimes they're more interested in their cell phone, in their BTS than the plans that the parents want to present them. So all they want is, okay, parents, just get, get, it, just get over with it so I can go back to my BTS and to the plan instead of the, instead of the plan. The play instead of the plan. But listen, 
God is always speaking. You know, as I, when we talk about prophetic words, and I've shared this with you before, when we planted this church, I had a few desires, inclinations. I knew that a season in my life was past then, you know, because as I said, when I was 18 years old, a prophet picked me out, gave me a word that marked the, that 10 years of my life. Literally, I can look back to my prophetic journal, my notes, and say, hey, God, God spoke when I was 18 years old about un- uniting youth groups, about uh, being part of the fivefold ministry, about going into different nations, about teaching in different countries, and blah, 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 blah. And when the word came, it was like, are you serious, God? It's not real. This can't be it. This is too far-fetched. But over 10 years, God was true to His word. And as I look back now, it's, voila, God is true to His word, regardless of my obedience, of my failures, of my... God was true to His word. And so, as I was just saying, God, what's the next season look like? I, if you remember, I was in... Uh, Jason went to IHOP, and I went there to uh, see him because I'm a good brother. I make sure that he's settled in. He's all alone. He can't drive then, and he couldn't go around. So I said, as a brother, I've got to go and visit him. And so I went to Kansas City in the middle of nowhere. It's a flat land. Nothing nice except some outlet mall, for some far, far. but there's no tourist attraction in Kansas. Maybe the, the gardens of the God, but I think apart from, you know, that's in Colorado. See? There's nothing nice. But I went there and, and I went to see my brother. The only thing nice there is, J- is Jason Chua. Come on. Woo! And so I went, I rented a car, first time driving on the wrong side of the road. Uh, sorry, Americans. And, and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, before I went, I got connected to Daniel Lim. Uh, some, now he's a close friend of ours. And Daniel gave me the grand tour. He, was, he, he is still and he was then the CEO of IHOP KC, right? So he gave me the grand tour of the new facility. And then he stopped the car and gave me a prophetic word. You have to understand that up to that point in time, I've heard all the prophecies in my life, right? which is like, you are, you, you are this, you are that, and I've heard that like a hundred times. So it, become, it came to a point where, where if someone said you're a father or you're, a, or you're an apostle, it becomes like, yeah, I've heard that a hundred times. Right? So it, it, it no longer brings life. Are you with me? It no longer brings life. It's, it simply confirms, it's, it's, it simply highlights perhaps a vocation or perhaps a call, a grace in your life. But what Daniel said to me was, un, was, un, was unusual. He looked at me and he said, you oh, know, I, I, I see, I see a, a lot. This is strange. Listen, he said, I see a lot of movement in, in your bowels. A lot of movements. Oh, I said, what? And then he said, you know, I see, you know, I see uh, movements coming out from you. And, and, and in fact, you know, he said, I see headlines. Some headlines have got content, some have got no content. And I said, that's a fresh word. I've never heard that before. And I just wish that I had taken my phone and recorded the word. Because you have to understand that I was prophesied out and I wasn't listening. I wasn't hearing. And so I was expecting just the usual, yeah, you're a, you are this, you are that. You know? But when he started saying, I said, can you repeat that? And when I pulled out the phone, it lost the, that same impact. Are you with me? Because when you, when, when you were under the Spirit, when you were prophesying, there was that flow and you, I missed that moment. Even though I still remember the gist of the word, but I just wished that I had... I had recorded the prophetic word. But you have to understand that God begins every new season in your life with a word from, from God. And I really believe, all right, whether have I partnered with the word well or not, I'm not sure. But what I know is this, in the last seven, eight years, there are new movements. For example, I think Burning Heart is a movement that has been birthed as a result you know, of the last eight years of, of our ch- church life. I believe... Uh, what Jeff is doing with Soakability on Saturday is a movement. And then I've encouraged him to say, Jeff, go for it. God has graced you with, with, with an unusual ministry of uh, healing, of uh, miracles, of doing unusual things on the street. Go for it. <laughs> That's Jeff Yuan, just in case you don't know. And many different people and movements were coming out. I believe what I'm doing now uh, through my work on a day-to-day basis, you know, it's a new movement. But every new season begins with a word from God. It doesn't have to be dramatic. It just has to be a word. And I want to just say this. Without a word, 
you are a wanderer. You're a wanderer. You're just wandering, saying, God, what are you doing? But with a word, you are a warrior. You take the word of God, the promise of God, and the Bible says, with, with the promise of God, you wage a good warfare. See, a prophetic word spoken in the right season in your life is a weapon. That in, in times of discouragement, in times when, when the promise seems far-fetched, when the promise isn't unfolding as you expected, take the word and when the devil comes and, and tempts you and start to uh, remind you or say things to you of, 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 from your past season and say, hey, you know what? God's not real. He's dead. You take the word and say, on this date, this person spoke this over me and I had the witness of the Spirit and I believe this is the word of the Lord. And you wage a good warfare. You push back the powers of darkness in your life. Amen? Amen. You're a warrior. Without a word, you're a wanderer. With a word, you are warring in the spirit. And I want to just give a word, I believe, to, to this church. It's not an uncommon word. It's a word that a lot of preachers probably would take and use it either on the first day of the first Sunday of the year or the last Sunday of the year. But let me just share with you Isaiah 43, verses 15 to 19. And I, I want to just make a few comments here. If time runs out, I'll just end, right? But a few comments here. Isaiah 43, verses 13 to 19. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. And thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and the horse, the army and the power. Right? So now he's reminding them of the Exodus story. All right? And then he said, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it. I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I want to just make three quick comments. The first comment is, you've got to remember who your God is. In a season of transition, remember who your God is. God says, I'm the Lord, I'm the Holy One, I'm the Creator, your King. Remember who your God is. Turn to the person next to you and say, He is your Lord. He is your Holy One. He is your Creator. He is your King. You have to remember who your God is. As I was just pondering on this verse, I make a few notes. And I, I want to say to those of you who are younger, all the youth here, Young adults here, remember the God of your fathers. Remember, especially for legacy. Most of you grew up in church and you are in church by default, not by design, unfortunately. Some of you perhaps are in here because you just come to know Christ, but majority of the, of the people in a legacy, you are here because your parents encounter God in the Red Sea. <laughs> God parted, did amazing miracles for your parents and, and, and you were born on the other side of the Red Sea. You were born in the promise. Hello? I want to remind you, guys, remember the God of your fathers. What He did. If you don't know that story, go to your parents and say, Dad, Mom, tell me your story. What did God do in your life? What miracles did he do? What, what, what breakthroughs did he create? What did God do? Remember the God of your fathers. If you grew up in a second generation home and you are not, if, if, if church to you is by default, not by design, this morning I want to remind you, go to your parents and ask them, Dad, Mom, why do you become a Christian? Tell me the stories, the miracles, the Red Sea parting, the chariots that were, that, that were drowned and, and, and the manas that were falling from the sky and the, and the birds that were coming suicide and giving us food and tell us all the trials and the, tell us the story. Remember the God of your fathers, but to the parents here and those who are listening from downstairs <laughs> or those who listen to this message in the podcast, I want to say this as I ponder on this uh, verse. To all who have been walking with the Lord for a long time, not having your children, having remember the God of your youth. Remember the God of your youth. Remember all the moments that that you have responded to the Lord at the altar, crying your eyes out, saying, God, I will serve you. Remember those moments. Remember all the promises He's made to you when you were seeking God for your first job and you're saying, God, I need a, 
God, I need you to provide. And He provides for you. Remember that miracle. You were praying for a child and God came through for you. And now you put more emphasis on the child than on God. I want to remind you, remember the God of your youth. Remember it was God who gave you your children. Remember the God of your youth. I am the Lord. He doesn't change. I am your king. That doesn't change. At whatever life stage you are in, that doesn't change. He is, the, he is your king regardless of how rich, how poor you are, regardless of whether you are single or you are married. He is your king. He is your Lord. He is your creator. That doesn't change you. Remember the God of your youth. And, and don't just be a laid-back, Sunday-going Christian. Remember those moments that you made promises to the Lord. Now, God doesn't, God wouldn't blame you and say, ah, oh, you wouldn't keep your promise. God's much bigger than that. I'm just reminding you, remember what I've said and let that ignite a fresh fire for you in 2018. Amen. Remember the God of your youth. And then he went on to, to say, forget, the, uh, forget, all right? Don't, don't remember the, for, the former things. Don't remember, all right? So the things, the, so let it go. All right, forget the failures. Forget the frustrations. Forget the pain. Forget from the last season. And then the final uh, verse there, if I can just give it a summary, a headline, dream again. I want to give this a word to this church because I tell you, we're into our eighth year now, I think, or our ninth year. In the last eight, nine years, uh, there were some amazing moments. There were some challenging moments. There were up and down. The journey hasn't been easy. The journey hasn't been as expected. Hello, some of us, for me especially, it's, you know, what, when, when we first planted this church and where we are now, it, it, it was a little bit different from what I expected, you know, but regardless, forget the failures, forget the frustrations. And there were people then that have come and said things and, you know, and I've done things that have maybe failed people because of our immaturity we are all imperfect people but as a church forget the failures forget the frustrations from the last season the all has passed dream again in your life it's the same thing it's the same thing in your life all right the frustrations the failures from the last season the you know the 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 challenges that you have got to go through leave them behind dream again in 2018 the third point I, 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 I want to make is new seasons begin when you arise. Hello. And that's the, and that's the whole point. If, you are, if you're always crying over spilled milk, if you can't leave 2017 behind, if you're always camping in 2017, or some of you have been camping in 2015. Hello, and the year is now 2017. It's last day. We're going 2018, but you are still camping in 2015. Oh, God was moving in my life then. Oh, I had an encounter with God in 1997. <laughs> now it's 2017. When you arise, see, every new season demands a new stance and a new step of faith. You have to step into it. And sometimes it can be scary. But your vision and your voice must now discern and declare the way forward. You cannot move forward with drive forward with your eyes looking at the rear at, at the what do you call it the the the, the rear view mirror. You can. If you want to see me and my wife uh, had any intensity at, at all, it's when either I'm driving or she's driving, right? <laughs> And we don't fight, really. We had discussions, we some, we, we sometimes, but we don't fight. Sometimes it's a little bit more intense, but you know, we have not fought for many, many years. The last, the last one Mary Beth would remember was a long time ago. But we had intense discussion about the children. They are usually the triggers. <laughs> But if you, but if you want to see any sort of reaction, it's, you, it's usually when we, we are driving, all right? So, and there will always be times when, when, when I'll jam break, 
Right, and the reason why is because you know I want um and as and as usually when I'm looking at the the rear view a mirror, and I didn't see the car in front of me, I'll jump and my wife turned to me and say, "Wait, what? What are you doing?" And I'll turn to her and and I'll lie. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and I say, "I saw it." No, it's it's a white lie because I actually saw the the car, but too late. <laughs> so I saw it. So technically, I wasn't lying. But the fact is, I didn't see it. That's why I jam break because I saw it a little bit too late. <laughs> and the reason is because I've, I, I was looking at the rear view mirror. It's either the car behind me is like either telling me or doing something funny or I was trying to uh, change lane. But every time I realized when I jammed my brake is when I was looking at my rear view mirror. Likewise, if your faith in God is always like... Ah, Oh, you're, you're always, it's maybe because you've been looking back all the time. Stop jamming break. Hope I'm making sense, but oftentimes, you know, we are, we, we are always like moving forward and then, you know, we, we, there's no flow, there's no, because we're always looking back. Arise. Let your vision be forward. Let your voice be in agreement with the next season. You know what I'm saying? Not just your vision, but your voice. You've got to not just... Listen, we, we, we are so used to walk. Uh, we have to walk the walk, walk the talk. Can I say this to you? Today, I give you a new phrase. Talk the walk. Talk the walk. Know where you are going and speak it till it becomes a reality. Talk the walk. I'm going to... I'm going into 2018 with faith, hope, and love. I'm going to, at end of, by the end of 2018, I'll be pregnant. I'll have a child. I will prove. Talk the walk. By the end of 2018, I'll be serving in the house of God. By the end of 2018, you know, I'll make an impact with my life. Talk the walk. By the end of 2018, I'll overcome that stronghold in my life. By the end of 2018, I'll break off fears. I'll break ties from, come on, talk the walk. All right, because if God has made a promise in your life, you know where you are going, talk the walk. In your marriage, if you know that oneness as a couple is the goal, talk the walk. We, we will be one by 2018. We'll be one by 2018. We'll be one in spirit, not just in body, but also in spirit and in soul in 2018. Talk the walk. Turn to the person next to you say, talk the walk. It's a new thing you have learned. A new language for you in 2018. But in 2018, we will arise and talk the walk. Not just walk the talk. Say good preaching. <laughs> exactly. I'm talking the walk. Do you remember the prophet Samuel when he was uh, hurting and he was in pain over Saul's disobedience and, his, and Saul was disqualified as king? Do you rem uh, remember in 1 Samuel chapter 16? Read the story, sir. It's a very interesting story because in, in the previous chapter, God, God was the one who regretted, he was like, I'm so sorry I made Saul king. And, and God was in a little bit, he was a little bit emo. If you read, of course he's not, but he's, he's God. But if you read the chapter, you feel like God, you know, you are whining. Read it. God's whining. And so I think Samuel being a prophet, he's softer, he has got great soft skills. So he was, he was empathizing with God a little bit. So if you go to 1 Samuel chapter 16, Samuel was mourning. And then God came to Samuel and said, Why are you mourning, Samuel? <laughs> Arise, take the flask of oil, go to the house of Jesse. I have the next king. See, God wasn't troubled by, you know, by, a, by a wrong step in the last season. He, he, he always has got the next step and the next plan. So don't, be, don't grieve. Stop, stop grieving over what had happened. Arise. Amen. Num number four, new seasons are built on old seasons. I spoke briefly about that, but I want to just say that you have got to honor 
the last season and the people, the leaders who brought you to this point in your journey. Because the, because the new season is built on the old season. You have to honor. Say honor. honor. It builds on. All right. They may not be relevant to you in the next season. They may not be part of your future, but as long as they are part of your past, honor. Amen? It's built on. You have to understand that, uh, that the season of reaping comes after the season of tearful sowing. All right. So your last season may be painful, but God brought people in your life to perfect you. That's what, uh, that's what people are for. Hello, if, if, if you don't know that, turn to the person next to you and look at them. God brought people into your life to perfect you. <laughs> you, you, you guys are a little bit scared about this point, right? especially when I'm it. but it's true. I know I tell you, I've grown in maturity because of my wife. I've, I've, I've learned patience, and so has she, because of my, because of our spouses. I've learned to become more like the father because of my kids. I've learned to love in spite of because of my children. I've learned to be, I've learned to be generous in, uh, because of my kids. <laughs> I, I mean, the, peop, God brought people into your life. You know, and likewise, in your Christian life, if you, if you've been, if you come and join us from a different church, I'm sure, I'm sure there's a reason. And sometimes the reason is not because Andre is so good looking, he speaks well, Jason leads worship well, or he's a prophet. And sometimes the reason is I was offended in my last church. Can we do some business as we end the year? If you were offended, make sure it's past tense as you go into 2018. Amen? Because if not, dishonor will hinder you from entering into a new season. One thing I've learned as a believer, not, not even a pastor, put the title all, all aside as Christians. I've learned, I've learned. Now, it's not an easy lesson to learn, but I've always learned to honor people in my life that may not be as friendly or may not be as easy to get along. Learn to honor them. People in your life that have maybe caused you pain, learn to honor them. People in your life that have been challenging, learn to honor them. People in your life that perhaps have rubbed you the wrong way, learn to honor them. Amen. From the last season, because they play a part in your life. They brought you to where you are. If you honor, if you respond with grace and you mature, if you react and you are, and you are angry and you're offended, it holds you back from your growth. It's, this is what, how life is. See, the... There, there may be challenges in the past season. Mistakes we make because of our own immaturity have caused pain. I have caused pain. Some of you have been, have, have, have been hurt by me before and, and it's not a prophetic word, it's truth. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just part of life. On, Andre may have offended some of you before. Jason may have said things to some of you that have, that have caused you pain. But Jason has said things to me that no, he has been a great <laughs> brother. Cons has been a perfect sister in love. I, I mean, oh, but there are people that have, because we were immature, things that were said that was not done. I mean, not just the pain of doing, but even the disappointment of, of unfulfilled promises. Amen? But all these things are part of our formative years. Yes. And the pain that we go through because of the immaturity of others. These are all, can I say, say this, don't, Forget all the pain, but don't waste them. Amen? I was just reflecting on uh, my life. Usually, most of us will, right? And thinking of, uh, for lack of a better word, of a slogan for the next year for my own, own life. All right? So I've got a few slogans that I borrow from different people. I'm, I mean, some people are better with words, so I borrow their words. You know, and so when I first planted this church, and I said, I want to live a life with nothing to lose, nothing to prove, nothing to hide. All right? That didn't come from me. It comes from, Ed, 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 from Edmund Chan. I dreamt of him last night. Interesting. All right? Edmund Chan, the, the founding pastor of Covenant EFC, I said, okay, I will live a life with nothing to lose, not, nothing to prove, nothing to hide. All right? And last night, I, I was just thinking, God, what, what should I say to the people? What should, 
be my driving force in, 20, in 2018. And I, and I came across a short video uh, by John Piper that, uh, that launched him to fame, really. All right? he, was a, he was not known. Some of you may not know who John Piper is. He, he, he's like the father of, of the, of the modern-day reform the, theologians, all right? So he's a reform guy, uh, we, you know, great, great guy, all right? But what launched him to fame was his message, uh, and he lost his notes because it was windy. It was, it was called the One Day, if you remember, right, youth pastor. Passion, there was a movement back in those days, and had one day where they, where they were worship, and that was when people like Matt Red, uh, uh, Redmond became famous. And so John Piper was one of the preachers, and that day was very windy, all right, in the U.S., and uh, he prepared his, his notes he, where he wanted to call both on both in the cross. Something he, typically John John Piper, right? He was, and, but his notes flew off. So two hands, windy. Half his notes flew off, left half his notes. So it was like, but for some reason, now he's not a spirit-filled believer. He's not like a prophetic guy. But for some reason, that day he was prophesying and he was telling stories, and and it became a book. I'm taking a long time to tell you the slogan. <laughs> And the book <laughs> is called The Unwasted Life. And I said to myself, Daniel, in 2018, live the unwasted life. Don't waste. Don't waste the pain. Don't waste the joy. Don't waste the circumstances in your life. Don't waste the frustration. Don't, don't waste the, even the precious moments. Don't live and Sever every moment of your life. And you can. Because if God is Emmanuel, if, if He's your very present help in time of need, if God is always with you, He will never leave and forsake you, it means that He will always be there in your up, in your down. There's a story that's very interesting in 1 Kings chapter 20. All right, and the Syrians, for some reason, because of their ignorance, thought that the God of Israel is just the God of the mountains. For some reason, they were coming against Israel and they thought that because Jehovah is the God of the mountains, now we're in the valley, no problem. We'll take Israel out like that. And then there was a prophetic boy, all right? You can see, not even a prophet. The Bible says that there's a man that came running uh, to the king of Israel and brought the king of Israel a prophetic word because the Syrians thought that, the God, uh, that God is the God of the, valley, uh, of the hills and not the valley. I'll completely destroy them. In other words, the word is, hey, I'm not just the God of the mountains. I'm also the God of the valleys in your life. Listen, we all enjoy mountaintop experiences, right? Don't we? We all love the high. We love the promotion. We love the opportunities. We, we love the encounter with God. We, we love a revelation from a scripture. We, we love, love gifts from people. We love, we, love all the, we love the affirmation from our bosses. We love the mountaintop experiences. But in the valley, most of us hate it. Right, the pain, the struggle, we were being bypassed, we were forgotten, we were, but He's still the God of the valley in your life. Amen. That's why don't waste the pain. Live an unwasted life in 2018. And James 1 says, when you go through trials, count it all joy. This is how we look at the challenges in our life. Count it all joy. Count it as a, as a joy. See, mature believers count differently. Amen? Wow, that didn't come from anyone. From, uh, it counts, uh, it count, it count, it dif- you count differently. God is a different accountant. Yes. He counts it differently. He counts the deficit as a plus. For some reason. It counts differently. And he says, count it all joy. Not, don't just count your blessing one by one. Count your pain one by one. And say, God, I count this as a joy because if it's not for this, I wouldn't be here. If it's not for this pain, I wouldn't get to know you. God is joy, is joyful pain. It's a bit like all tear, you know. I don't know about you, but I love it. Like, you know, when I hit myself, if, if it's not that serious, I'll get my kids to like, hey, can you just help me press? It's like, Painful joy, joyful pain. It's like, I love it. Even though it's painful. Ah. Mary Beth, please. <laughs> that wasn't part of my notes. I just, it just came out. Number five. I, I'm coming to a close. The next three points will be very short. But transition with courage. As you move from, from your last season to the next, transition 
with courage. There's always some nostalgia. All right? We all love old things. Some of us do. Most of us do. All right? I saw a, fo- a, a, a photo on, a, on Facebook that Christine posted of a camp uh, from a long time ago when I was a youth pastor. Right? So they were trying to guess which date, which year was that camp. And so brought back a lot of memories when I was youth pastoring. I love, I love those few years. All right? And it was fun. Nostalgia. Some old songs make you cry. All right, uh, we always had this fight in the car between me and my kids. They want Kiss 92. I want, uh, that's Chinese. I want Go 95 uh, or, or, or 938 because I love the news. So that's that, was that. But I love old songs because it brings back memories. I, I still remember, you know, I had a crush on a girl when I was growing up and uh, a long time ago. And the song that was playing then was, It must have been love, but it's over now. And when I, whenever I hear that song, it brings back a lot of memories. Oh, when I was 17 years old and I was in TJC and, you know, and the song that was playing in the canteen then was, uh, it's a one-hit wonder. I can't remember what it's called now, but what's it called? I can't remember. It will come back, all right, random. But you know, those songs will bring you back to that moment in time. All right, it's good, but it's also a trap. So we need to transition into a new season with courage. There are, there are a few verses that follow Josh chapter 1, verse 2 that I thought was very interesting. This is God. He knows human nature so well because He made us. He made us, right? So let's look at some of these verses. Very interesting. All right, in a few verses, God... Every place. So God was making Joshua a promise. All right. So the difference between Moses, Moses was, was establishing the priesthood, the, the, the patterns for living, you know, uh, different things. But, but now Joshua is a warrior and he is to conquer. So every place that the sword of food will tread upon, I've given you. As I said to Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea toward the the going down of the sun shall be your territory. That's a promise. All right. Was it true yet? Not yet. All right. That's why you've got to talk the walk. And if and and Joshua, I believe, learned this. All right. So no man shall be able to stand before you all days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. I'm not leaving or forsake you. And verse 6 says, Be strong and of good courage. Why did God say that? Because He knows that uh, most of us are faithless people. Even though God has spoken, but we find, we find real situations easier to believe than what God said. Amen? It's true. We find what is before us, what we can see, easier to believe than what God said. We are, most of us are Thomas. All right? Thomas said, show me the, the sky in your hand, then I will believe. Most of us will say, show me first, God. Show me, show me. I want to possess first, then I believe you are true. But God is saying, be strong, be of good courage, for to these people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to the fathers to give them. Next verse, please. Again, he says, only be strong and be very courageous that you may Observe to do according to all the, all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. And then he says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. You may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do, do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Can I say this to you, young people? God is as naggy as your parents. God is as naggy as your parents. How many times did God say, be, good, be, be strong and be of good courage? In, in less than a minute, He says, be strong. He was naggy. He says, hey guys, be strong and be of good courage. It's like, do your homework, clean up your mess. Do your homework. God is, God is nagging. Be strong. We have good courage. Because why? Because He knows that we forget all the time. He knows that we are fearful. He knows that we, we, we tend to believe what we see and what He says. So courage is needed as we transition. Next verse, please. Sorry, next point. <laughs> Sorry, I missed my notes here. You know, I'll share a story real quick. But when we were planting this, planting this church about eight years ago, it was a very interesting season in my life. Very interesting because it was also at that point when Joy was pregnant, my wife was pregnant with Mary, uh, with, with Megan. And, uh, and most of you know the story of how 
she was bleeding and she went to the doctor and they couldn't find the heartbeat. So we thought that the baby uh, had, uh, no, was not alive, that, 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 that uh, there was a miscarriage. And so she scheduled the appointment to basically abort the baby and then went, the, then went to a second opinion, found the heartbeat. Wow, the baby was alive. And so it was up and down. I, I was in, Viet, in Vietnam. I came back home and after a few months, I, we discovered our mom had cancer. And then after a few months, they were renovating the house and they moved into my place. And Jason was in there. So it was a real challenging time as we were planting this church. Very challenging, personally. You know, and then uh, all, uh, and, with, and, and handing over the youth group, my mom going through treatment, uh, my wife just gave birth, the house was not too big. You know, and, so, and do you know what? I've learned one thing. Take God at His word. Be strong and very courageous. See, courage is only courage when there are things that you've got to overcome, when there are opposition you've got to push through. That's when courage becomes real. You can say, I'm courageous. So you beat your own chest when everything is nice. And what's the point? Talk only. (laughs) But... (laughs) When everything is going wrong and you rise up and you have good courage, that, that's, that makes you a courageous person. And the courageous person win games. You know, I love basketball. And I believe the all-time best basketballer ever is Michael Jordan. No matter what you guys say, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, MJ is the all-time best. And it's not his, the number of shots he made, whether he do three points like Stephen Curry. I don't care about all, all Stephen Curry. See, I don't know Stephen Curry's name. But you know one thing I know? The number of times you know, I see Jordan scoring with less than one second on the clock. That's courage. The guy who dares to release that shot and it's not just once or twice. The number of times he asked for the ball from his teammates. Some of you may say, Stephen Curry does the same thing. No, as far as I'm concerned, Jordan's the best. <laughs> I'm biased. <laughs> but that's courage. That is courage. You know, something I want to learn uh, in the New Year's God, I want to understand how, yeah, how, how, how do you perform under pressure like that? That's cu- courage. And sports people understand that. All right, when all the lights are on you, when all the expectation is on you, and how do you shut yourself out? How do you just zoom in on the promise? All right, how do you focus on just the price and you, and you shut yourself out from all the noises and just go for it? Listen, this is what courage is. And what, and, and what God is saying is, hey, there will be noises. People that you have got, that, people that will be speaking about you, people that will come against you, and people that will challenge the word that I've given to you, people that will even refuse to believe in, in, in the promises I've made concerning our nation, concerning this. Joshua, be bold. Be very courageous. I'm with you. The word is true. Just be bold. Be very courageous. Transition with courage. Six and seven, new roads are before us, new rivers are ahead of us. You know, oftentimes, can we just put our notes aside? Listen, oftentimes, the reason why we're fearful in our transition is because we don't know what is ahead. We don't know. We're, we, we're, we're afraid, we're fearful. And that's why Israel prefer the leeks and the onions in, in Egypt than... The, the lush fruit orchard, trees in the promised land. The honey, a land flowing with, with milk and honey in the promised land. That's why, because we are usually more comfortable in our past than we are about our future. But I want to say this to you, church. In a new season, there are new roads and new rivers before us. There are. You can't see it yet. That's before you. Some of you who are brand new believers this year, uh, you, you may think that, you know, the Christian life is just coming to church on Sunday, saying a few prayers. 
I want you to know that this is this is this is this is furthest from the, the truth. In the last 25, 30 years of walking with the Lord, has been the most adventurous walk that I've ever been in. No one told me that when I became a Christian. No one. No one told me that it, it's more than just read my Bible, go to church, be part of a cell group. But you see, that's what following Jesus is about. The road of faith has led me to some unusual places, met some unusual people, did some unusual things. The river of God's divine supply has brought us thus far. I mean, it's amazing. And last but not least, I want to say in this brand new year, let us build in this house, a house of champions, yeah? Let's build. The Lord spoke to me clearly and He uh, he said, in this house is a house of champions. House of champions. All of us, we are are not just backbenchers, we are not just uh, seat warmers. All of us in the brand new year will discover why we were made, why we are born again, why we are saved, why we are in church. If there are things in our lives that are holding us back, if there are pain from the past, if there are areas that we need to be healed, get yourself healed. Because friends, listen, I believe God has called us to lead champions. And every single one of you, there are things that God has put over your life. Some of you know it, some of you don't know it yet. There are things, because God didn't die for sinners. Yes, He died. But, but, that's a, but that's a bad deal as far as God's concerned, right? Will you die for sinners? That's just part of, the, that's just part of Him showing His love. The Bible says, right, that, that while, we were yet, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But there's also a, a verse that says, and Christ has come to bring many sons into glory. Right? He wants to turn sinners into sons and sons are people who are after the glory. If you're in sports, you know it. You don't want to, to, be, to, be, to be number two, right? Do you know that, in, this is what I heard, in psychology, correct me if I'm wrong, right? That, that the silver medalist is more depressed than the bronze, uh, than, the guys, than the guy who gets bronze? Because you're so close, yet you miss it. The bronze, you, actually, you got a medal and you're happy, you know? But... And I believe that's what God, and that's who God is. He wants all of us to win in this life. He wants all of us to reign in this life. He wants all of us to do exploits in this life, in your workplace, in your school. He wants all of us to be champions in this life. What are you championing? My wife champions foster care, champions adoption. I'm championing people, kingdom. Jason champions championing intimacy, loving God, awakening hearts. Some of you championing leadership. What are you championing? God has a cause for you to champion. Discover that in this brand new year. As you transition from the old to the new. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet.